As we walk along the pristine white sand beaches and the beautiful marshes, we note with sadness that Tangier Island is sinking. This is partially due to a 10,000-year-old phenomenon known as glacial rebound, causing the island to sink a millimeter or two each year. But the more pressing problem is a combination of storm-driven erosion and sea level rise that may swallow the island within a few decades. Tangier Island has lost two-thirds of its land mass since 1850. Tangier is smack in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay and is the second to last of dozens of inhabited islands that have been consumed. Spry's Island, Goose Island, Holland Island, the names echoing like ghosts. Cowboy. Oh, you took your cowboy hat off. Bon Jovi. <laughs> Where's your cowboy hat? Because I'm such a Bon Jovi man. So what is our destination today? To Tangiers Island. We came out of uh, Anankak. Now we are tacking directly toward Tangier Island. We are uh, utilizing our wind vane so we can head as high up into the wind as we can. How far is it? From the marsh to Tangiers as the crow flies. It's about seven, seven and a half nautical miles. But by the time we're finished tacking, it'll be more like 10, 13. So do you know anything about Tangiers Island? There is a ferry that travels twice a day from Anankak and it seems to be full while we were anchored there. On the weekend it yeah. was quite full. It looks like there's quite a large number of buildings there, at least from five nautical miles away. Yeah. I can see a water tower and, and a number of buildings. I believe there are several bed and breakfasts and some yeah. small restaurants and there's a marina. And you can see the, the waves, you know, maybe a foot and a half, two feet waves, but they're very inconsistent, so it's kind of just an easy rock and roll yeah, uh, sail. Yeah, it's a pretty easy sail. Yeah. As far as heading up as high into the wind as we possibly can uh, in a big, long, open body of water like we are in right now, this is, this is sweet sailing. We anchor south of the town in Cod Harbor. Once Lab Mariner is safely anchored, our plan is to beach our dinghy and to walk along the beach area to the public beach near Hogs Ridge Road. Fortunately, the forecast for the next few days is for light winds because Cod Harbor does not offer a lot of protection. Looks okay. So we're going to see if we can get to the town. It looks like there are vehicle tracks, so maybe we can walk around. We weren't sure if there was a crossing from this beach area to the town. We saw an oyster farm near where we anchored, and as we walk along the beach, we spot floating cages that have washed ashore. We find that there is a marshy area between the beach areas on the east and west sides, so we head south until we find a way to reach the east side. Well, we made it to the town. Oh, that feels good. Cool water. Once we reach the public beach, it's about a 20 minute walk into the town. The main town occupies about two square miles, much of that marshy, and can easily be traversed by golf cart or if you have three big dogs who need some exercise on foot. Tanger Island is made up of three sandy ridges, Main Ridge, Canton, and West Ridge that are connected by bridges. We crossed the largest channel on Tangier Island called Big Gut Channel over one of the four bridges that connect West Ridge and Main Ridge. Tangier History Museum. The Tangier Island Museum opened in 2008 and is located on Main Ridge Road. Interestingly, the museum offers free use of canoes and kayaks to paddle the water trails on the island, but unfortunately, it was not open when we visited. Me? Okay. There is some question as to when Tangier Island was first settled. An 1800 census showed that there were 79 people on Tangier Island. 
most being recorded as crockets or descendants of the crockets. The channel. And I think that may be the marina parks. PPC pipe, yeah. There's a dock to tie up their boats. And then they can fit them in really close. No wasted space. Parks Marina. Brief stay. Huh? Overnight over 30 is $30. Short power five. That's it. Yeah. Tangier is a closed community, so most people are either related or intermarried. The same names crop up on the gravestones. Parks, Pruitt, Thomas, Crockett, Charnock. Pruitt, Crockett, Parks. It's a hot summer morning, and walking around, we're struck by the eerie quiet of the place. The graves in the front yards, the relative lack of visible people with the men off working in the water. In particular, we're struck by the gravestones in front yards. A sign tells us four main reasons for these burial sites. Close proximity, reduced grave robbery, animals less likely to dig, up, dig them up, higher ground near a home was less likely to result in a casket being floated to the surface by rising tides. Uh, Crockett restaurant is pretty popular. They do family style meals only. Yeah, it's a, I think it's an all you can eat. I think it's been here for a long time though. Yeah. So the dinghy's still there and the boat's still there. <laughs> that was a long time ago. It's already been taken over by the marsh. Standing on one of the four bridges that span the creek at the island center, we realize that this scene has likely been the same for years. As the waters of Tangier slowly swallow up around the shoreline, more than the land is being threatened. A way of life, a fascinating history, and a unique dialect are in danger. Goose, or a duck. Yeah, exactly. Where did he come from? Definitely trained with bread. Yeah, he came right up to me. I wonder if he was somebody's pet. It's 11 a.m. and we walk quickly along the beach to our dinghy. It's the middle of summer and neither us nor the dogs like the flies that we experience in the marshlands. We pass by the crab shacks in the middle of Tangier's Harbor, which are essentially wooden huts on stilts where every crabman conducts their operations. Soft-shelled blue crabs are the island's mainstay export and are the major income source for the 40-some watermen that still remain on Tangier Island. We head to Spanky's, which is a 1950s style ice cream parlor on Main Ridge Road. Main Ridge Road is the main drag on the island, and we come here to watch the golf carts as well as bikes pass by. We're having some ice cream. What kind of ice cream are we having? Special Stephanie Day ice cream. So coffee and... Coffee and chocolate fudge. And chocolate fudge. Excellent. Am I wearing it? Nope. <laughs> Not yet. We watch people coming down the main drag. So we're sitting on the main drag, it seems like, in Tangier Island. <laughs> We've seen like 10 golf carts pass by in like yeah. last plant. five Social minutes. <laughs> A couple of bikes. Are you going to be up for that? No, that's thing I'm taping you. Okay. So 
what you think of Tangier Island. Cool place. Yeah, it's very quaint. Yeah. Kind of a throwback area. In some ways. But you can imagine this being a uh, strategic island during the uh, Revolutionary uh, War period. Yeah. When it was occupied by the British. Pretty much has a total uh, view of the entire Chesapeake. Tangier's uncertain future has prompted more tourists to visit this little island. But Tangier is not a resort. It does not offer a golf course or concessions along the pristine white beach. Tangier harkens to an earlier time, a slice of a bygone America. One can walk along the beautiful green marshes and the pristine white sand beaches and catch glimpses of herons, osprey, and egrets. It's unsettling walking the streets of this doomed island. Almost $3 million has been provided by the government to protect the harbor and the West Channel by building a stone jetty, but this only covers a very small portion of the island. As we pass the crab shacks and back to Lab Mariner, we are glad that we have visited Tangier and are reminded of what we stand to lose with this remarkable island. And as we watch the sunset over the island, we consider what this foretells for other areas in the Chesapeake.